All right, so let's start this conversation, guys. And uh, the question here is, why is it that, um, first of all, how? Then on top of it, why do these esports teams come and go like the way they do? What, what, what kills or collapses an esports team? And, and how can that be avoided? That's the real question. Now, this is not to make fun of teams closing. This is, um, I don't want people to get the wrong idea. This is not about us talking about uh, closing. And we're not talking about esports teams failing. A lot of esports teams are failing. Many esports teams, 90% of the esports teams around the world are all failing. And what, what that means is, is that they're not turning a profit. A lot of investment is going into these teams and th they have to fail before they prosper. So there's a, a level of investment that goes into it. So it takes a while before you see some progress from some esports teams. Very few esports teams turn profit. Very few. Um, if you're comparing all esports teams around the world, if you if you're going to certain regions, then some regions is 50-50, some regions is 75-25, some regions are 90-10, like 90 failing, 10 winning, and then the the large. If you combine that, like around the world it's really like 95 5 fail to success ratio so i'm not talking about failing teams i'm talking about teams that have come here and are dead like dissolved buried grave like if you look at the thumbnail you see that grave i just put there and i'm just like damn like murked finished finito um you know, trash, busara, you know, traga, whatever you want to call it, gone. <laughs> and we have to ask ourselves, how do these teams get there? So um, we're in a room with Robin. And you were on a team, before you joined EMP, you were on a team called um, the Chicago um, Chimera or Chimera? I think it's Chimera. That's how it's pronounced, right? Chimera? All right. And that was a part of the CGS league. Now, most people say, well, that doesn't make any sense, Triforce. If it was a part of a league and the league closed down, of course the team would close down. But based on what you've told me, yes, one of the teams. And Optic Gaming came out of the CGS, correct? So that's a prime example of a team. Um, that's a prime example of a team actually coming from a league that died but still lived on. How can that team have lived on if it started from the league? And I think I, I wanted you to, um, to, to go on that and then I'll expound upon it. So what's your thoughts? Why do you think they've survived but the other teams in that league have died? Yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now loud and clear. So you have the floor okay so let me so let me let me do this real quick <laughs> while i'm off the wi-fi because it keeps connecting me and disconnecting me so i was a part of a team um that was part of cgs championship gaming series my team was um chicago uh, chimera before i joined empire acadia and one of the things that i feel like you know i think money plays a big factor in these teams mm -hmm. like a lot of them have have a good idea and then either they blow the money or they don't know how to properly invest it and or they're just not really seeing a return on their investment so they get out you know and then i think on a community level you know they get discouraged and their players get poached <laughs> oh the player poaching is is all the player poaching um, is always something man I mean, there, there's a lot of factors, mm -hmm. but I think one is money, structure, and then like you got to look at it because like every esports team isn't isn't set on the same principles, know, business structure, how to principles oh, yeah. and how they can stay afloat. Just I mean, like prime example, you know, you would think that we would be dead and gone like a lot of people think that we are but they only know us because of our fighting game team or the fighting game division mm -hmm. but because we're we have a we're built on a different foundation and we're more 
we operate from within ourselves, you know what I'm saying? We're self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. We really, for the most part, don't depend on anybody unless we have sponsors that are willing to work with us and they, they get our goal, our mission, and they just take it from there, you know? How a partnership should be. No, um, no, I, I don't mean to. Um, oh, we have a donation. Oh, we have a donation. Speaking of self-sufficient, we have a donation from one of our players, um, Royal Lance. Lance AC donated ten dollars. Thank you, Lance. I really appreciate that. Goes a long way to help us. Um, big shout outs to Lance, who's now playing the riot-based card game Rune Terror. You guys will see some more content from Lance coming real soon. Um, he, he went to Waypoint back um, in New York and he did like a seven hour stream of the game. Um, he's a, a Hearthstone player for EMP and now he has turned his sights to Rune Terror. So he's starting it while the game is young. So we look, to, look forward to seeing Lance on the, on the battlefield once again. Big shout out to Lance. So now I don't want to segue to this because I want to focus on the thing, but this is a question. Although we are self-sufficient, for the organization that we are, do you think that at, if we keep continue to keep this up, that we can we can stay afloat in today's esports ecosystem? In today's esports ecosystem, mm -hmm. I mean, I think we can just basically because of how we restructured the organization. Like, and that's the other thing I I feel like is the problem. You know, like when there's a new era or a new trend. It's kind of like with technology, as technology advances, it's either you learn that technology or you die. Mm -hmm. and so we have to adapt to like the new way yeah, of things. You have to adapt. Like right now, everything is about streaming, you know, content creation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like up until the next big thing comes out, whether whatever that may be, we'll be able to stay afloat and we have been staying afloat for many years because of us doing everything from the inside mm -hmm. well i definitely i definitely agree with you on that then um like uh, we are going to adopt um and adopt some of today's um policies in the the, the esports e e ecosystem and apply it to our traditional way we forged our um our team Cause I I don't want to give I don't want to go away from what we are, but at the same time we can't tradition alone can't keep you afloat in the ever evolving world. You have to evolve, but you can also maintain some of your traditions. So I just want to talk about just want to get your thoughts on that, um, just so that's out there. But let's get back to these other teams, right? So you think it's a money issue, but what about the community teams, the the DMGs? The, uh, the FYCs, the revolution, the RGs, the revolutionary gaming. What about all of these guys that have come and they died? Like, how do, they don't have the same structure as the industry teams. So why is it they close down? Hmm. Your thoughts? Ego? Ego. And um, and what? See. Ego. Mm -hmm. it, and what I mean by that, if there are multiple partners involved, Okay. And let's say there's a disagreement. Um, and the prime example of this, because I've seen this on many like gaming documentaries and like gaming studios, like there's multiple partners involved. And let's say one partner want to go in this direction, another partner is like, now let's do this. Mm -hmm. That could be a thing, like inside uh, um, squabbles or whatever. Or maybe they just don't want to do it anymore. Like for whatever reasons, it might be personal, you know. Yeah, but then, um, and that's the thing, like, with, with some of these, kind of, like, outside of Evo, because mm -hmm. they started, what, in a, in a garage, correct? Like, their first... Oh, no, no, well, no that, out, right? uh, you mean Evo, no, not MLG. MLG started out in the garage. No, no, not, not, not M MLG, I meant Evo. Evo. Oh, no, they, these guys started out in the arcade. Um, they, um, oh, okay. Battle so, at the Bay. So they started out at an okay, so, arcade. I look from where they grew. They, they grew out of a community. And they became a like a, right. a large entity. Go on. Yeah, so they are a prime example of doing it right. But what about like these other guys? Is it just one entity? Because I, I knew about a couple of these uh, community um, esports teams, but uh, like, are they were they just like one partner or multiple partners? 
I think you would probably be able to elaborate more on that. Yeah, than I would. The, some of them had multiple partners. Some of them were a group, but um, mm-hmm. you know that's the same thing for us. We're a group, and uh, we we find a way to stick together on, on that level. So like, right. We, but also like, I mean, I guess the reason why a lot of the things work for us is because you surround yourself with like-minded individuals that have the same goal. They see the bigger picture. You know, they they see the short term, they see the, the middle going along the journey, and then they see end game. You know what I'm saying? And then mid game plus. We see that. Mm-hmm. But you have like a lot of people that is in it for their own agendas or, you know, everybody wants to go out and prove and be like, oh, I did this by myself. You know, try to kind of sort of start their own thing, and we've seen that before plenty of times within Empire. Plenty Radio. of times. <laughs> and then they go out, and then they like, oh, it's real out here in these streets, and it's cold out here, and we're like, yeah. Like, like it, why would you? Yeah. But anyway, that's going off into a completely yeah. different thing. But I don't know, like it, just based upon what I've experienced and seen you know, coming out of Empire Acadia and some folks started to do whatever, that that's just kind of an example, maybe, you know, people not sharing the same vision or people just don't want to do it anymore or, you know, money, financial, uh, maybe the wife told them to stop, hang it up <laughs> because that, that was a thing when I was with the Supercon series, mm-hmm. you know, he had that business for like 10 plus years and I guess they were making a little bit of money from it but in the end they were losing more money than making money so uh, he uh, the wife made my um, my friend partner and CEO of the Supercon series like hey if we don't make something happen this year it's time to hang it up so it could be that it, 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 you just never know but though, see, that's my speculation. That's what I think it is. See that that right there is um, that right there is crazy because um, in um, there's <laughs> uh, this. I want to show you something. I'm gonna pull up on the stream, right? Uh, let me see if I can bring it up on the stream. All right. Wow. It's it's big. I don't know why it's big like that. I want to bring up that this team, like, because when you mention these, <laughs> when you mention these teams, I just really got to sit there and say, what is this even about? So here's something Wes brought to my attention earlier, right? When we were talking about why are these teams, how do these teams come and go? Now, listen, guys, I want to give everybody a chance. I want to give everyone a chance, but there's this team right here. I'm gonna go on the channel. I'm gonna go on the actual page and look. Uh, they're out of Twitch and X Byte, I guess it is. Burrito Esports. We're an esports organization that changed the world one burrito at a time. 2017 Paladins World Champion, right? World Champions. Okay, so they were called Burrito Esports and. This is the funny thing. The team was formed in 2017. They won a world championship in Paladins. But then you look here. What? What? What is this foolishness? It was, wait, it was an actual team? Like, are you for real? Yes. <laughs> uh, if you look on the stream, you'll see it. I- I'll put it in the YouTube chat. Oh, I'm, I, I, I oh can't. you can't. You can't. I'm sorry. I'm going to put it in the YouTube chat for you guys because this is, don't laugh now. It is funny, but let's not laugh here. We're not here to make fun of people, right? Wait a minute. Okay, this is stupid. Um, so I'm looking here and they have a tweet, October 28th, this year. So this was only this was only 20 days ago. And it says, with a heavy heart, we are announcing Burrito Esports is ceasing operations on November 1st, 2019. 
After a lot of considerations throughout, uh, throughout the year, we've decided to best, no, it's best to finally make this decision regarding burrito. Uh, I, it, it's kind of hard to take them <laughs> serious when they're naming themselves I'm, burrito, but whatever. All right, we're gonna repass it. What? We had a lot at a lot of ups and downs from the start all the way to the bitter end. From the early start, as an entertainment social media project poking fun at esports organizations to becoming an actual organization with strong focus on the support of players. After winning the Paladins Invitational in 2017, we were over the moon and excited for a bright future ahead of themselves. So this was an organization that never even took esports seriously. This led so to some... Yeah, they started out as a troll. As yeah, a as a troll. troll, yes. This is people who have money and... <laughs> oh, man. This led to several paladin rosters and, uh, and, and our ve uh, venture into Smite, Brawlhalla, and Rivals of Ether in 2017, leading to our peak in 2018 with the acquisition of the Latin American Paladins roster. Finishing in third place in Paladin Summer Finals, and not to mention the pro uh, promising Smite Minor League, team and our short term in Fortnite, but then uh, but with yet another setback we were unable to stay the course of the professional esports what setback was that what setback did they go get into like what what possible setback you got third in the paladin summer finals and in a promising smite minor league what kind of setback could you get uh, anyway moving forward with more and more esports games changing their leagues to the American franchise model, we found ourselves unable to, um, to get the chance to compete at the highest level in our favorite titles. We had to sell players. Wow, sell players. Do the straight mercenaries out here. We had to sell players to newly formed franchises leagues to let them compete at the pro level. We've come to the decision that it's best to leave our legacy behind. What? So it the sounds like burritos. Uh, All right, hold again, on. Um, <laughs> well, outside of burritos, aside of running out of burritos, <laughs> it sounds like a money thing. Apparently, hold on. It, go, it goes on to say, and to look forward to new opportunities. We'd like to thank everyone who supported us from the start, and we would like to thank all of those who have been a part of burritos history. Oh boy, whether your impact was small or large, it is truly it tr it all truly mattered to us. Thank you all. Um, thank you to all the fans in our community who continue to support us throughout our whole run. May your guac stay forever fresh, your salsa spicy, and your fun last forever. I don't even think these guys even even when they're closing. I know they're trying to be make it light, be light on on the situation, but you can't be yeah. you can't be taken serious if your <laughs> your guac fa stay forever fresh. Your salsa, spicy, and then the last thing you say is adios. <laughs> These guys literally said adios. <laughs> That's wild. So, that is. Uh, I guess I guess that was their thing. That kind of you know set them apart from other esports teams. They have to. You know, I mean, it's it's corny, but I get it. Danny's laughing as laughing or uh, his, his head off in the in the chat uh but <laughs> it's called burrito esports so it, it, it's just crazy then you have a team like mad cats right mad cats are daigo I, I don't even understand how mad cats close i don't even understand how echo fox closed how did echo fox even close What's up with that? How did that even take place? How did that even happen? Like, all that money and that team dissolves. Um, Phil is in a call, so I'm waiting for Phil to be there on the company. Talking to a, a bunch of other people about I don't know. I guess you know what? I'm I'm gonna throw it back at you. All like, right. Since you've been in this business for eons. Like, okay. Like 30, 30 years, right? With that Well the scene for thirty plus years, the industry for seventeen. 
well, the okay. esports industry so, for 17, which I relatively think so, is the same thing. Go on. So in your so in your 17 years of experience, like I don't know, like from you starting Empire Acadia, your baby, your legacy, right? Mm -hmm. And then looking at the 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 other team, like what would you say was the the the, the cause of them disbanding or? you know just calling it quits and just saying you know what just ain't for me like what do you think it is well, your like professional experience in my personal experience i believe that um i believe these guys um the reason why they their teams close is because they were never in it for esports they're in it for money and then some people will say that um, the two are the, are, are the same, and they're not. You know, building an esports team is about losing because you're trying to help build an industry. It's not about winning. It's about losing. It's about investing the time to build something. So you can't expect you can't expect um, you can't expect to. Um, to build a team unless you just unless you're bill gates you just have the money and even when you do have right. the money it's still losing because mm -hmm. the way esports is the way esports started in the early 80s to the way it was revolutionized in the modern times neither way neither versions of the industry um are globally sustainable yet there are entities that can sustain themselves but globally general no 90s like i said earlier in the beginning of this um this uh, thing 90 something percent of all esports teams are failing literally failing that's not a bad thing because you have to understand the way the business empire arcadia is failing but that we're not there's a difference between failing and dissolve when you dissolve it's over failing failing simply means you're not profiting very few teams are um are successful and winning and successful means your team invests a certain amount of time equity resource all that stuff and it is profiting from it few teams do that in esports most teams are putting all that in and getting nothing back out of it other than its accolades and and, and just existing to help maintain the entire industry until the industry gets to a level where everyone, or at least 50% of the scene, profits. So that's a weight uh, for so many people. We're, we're, on, we're still at 90, 95% fail, 5, 10% succeed. We gotta get that to, we gotta get another 40, we gotta get another 45 to 40% successful before we can even sit here and say, okay, we got something running. Who knows how long that may take? Five years, 10 years, 20 years, we don't know. but. The amount of money these guys are putting in. I don't agree with nothing in the Riot League. I don't agree with any of these esports organizations that spend millions of dollars. It is absolutely bonkers and foolish. The players do not generate the amount of money these corporations are investing and putting into these teams. For instance... Just throwing out a random number because I don't want to put, I'm just going to call it Team X. Get an investment, $27 million. We're going to give you $27 million for what? This esports team. We need you to create a roster of esports players that not only is going to get our invested money back, but a return on that investment. That means in order for the investment to even be seen as worth it, the investors have to at least get back $40 million. So now, right. your team has to be able to generate $40 million. You know, the, the team that got paid the most money um, as a team was, I think, Evil Genius for Dota. And I think each player got like I think the whole, I, I don't, I, I can't remember the money, 
but not a single player got over $10 million. Not one. So let's just say they got $10 million each, right? And they're playing Dota. That's $50 million. The players have to give back a certain amount of money to the team because the team is the one that got them the investment, sponsorship, set them up, got them the house, the games, the equipment, so all that other stuff, the overhead to get them going. Right. They got to pay back that money. Mm -hmm. Even if every single player that gave $5 million of the $10 million that they won, that's only $25 million. They're still short. The advertising companies that they want to advertise their players through are not paying no $20 million to these players. They're not LeBron James. They're not nobody. The highest paid person from Mixer, and this is rumored, it, it, no, I'm, I'm, I'm like content creator is Ninja, and it's rumored he got $10 million. And even if he did get $10 million, so? So what? I'm like, the, the, the above average NBA player gets more than that. And? So the players cannot generate this amount of money to get, the, to get back to the investment. And I, this hyper, this hyper, is it inflation? This hyper inflation, I'm probably using the word inflation wrong, but the hyper inflation of the money creating these large amounts of like um, costs. And you know it doesn't cost that much. I think that's what's hurting not only the industry, because the industry can actually grow faster if they would stop that, but it's also killing the teams because the teams cannot, main, they, they can't do it. They just can't do it. That's why teams always are looking, you got guys like FaZe looking at offset rappers or rappers trying to invest money in this. They have to go on the outside. Why do you think they go to the outside looking for investors? Because the team cannot generate the money. Why are you investing in a team that cannot generate the, a fraction of the money that you're investing in? The team it physical self. That's supposed to be your fallback plan as an investor. I go, if I'm an investor and I go to an esports team, I'm an investor. I come to Triforce. Hey, Mr. Uh, Triforce, yes. Um, so we see what you've done with your esports team. You guys got a little legacy going. You guys are known for the tournaments that you won throughout World Cyber Games, um, MLG, Evolution, um, tournaments of Republic of Fighters. We're talking about like in France and in Japan at um, whatever Super Battle Opera that they have or whatever, the, the, all these different tournaments all around the world, even down to in, even in, in Africa. We want to invest in you. My first thing is going to be like, all right, what is your investment for? What are you looking, what are you looking for your invested dollars to do for our team? That's the first thing because I need to know whether or not our team can produce Produce the results that the invested money is coming into us. We can, it would be, it would be irresponsible for me to take on money that we can't provide a result to. Because I'm literally dooming the team. So I'm not going to take in any money that I know I can't, if I can't produce the results, can I return it? If a team came and says, okay, we'll give you $150,000. $150,000? What is it you're looking for? We want to merchandise your legacy of EMP. Give you guys a facelift. You guys have been um, covered under the dirt for a very long time, but you guys have a huge, a real in-depth history on what you do and stuff like that. How many years? Um, three years. So in three years, at, at, as an insponsible recipient to the investor, I'm looking in my mind like that means I have to return $300,000 to this investor in three years. That's his investment. That's, that's literally the return on the investment. 100%. Or at the very right. least, right? At the very that's least. That, that's, that's that plus interest, correct? Yes. Or at the very least, a quarter million dollars. So I got to look and say, okay, if I get $100,000, $150,000, what is it that I'm going to invest that money in that's going to flip that to generate $250,000 in three years? That's where my mind would be. Number two, cost, um, uh, 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 cost and overhead. I would have to map out how content creation, merchandising, sending players to where they need to be, all that's got to be all of that. And, I, and even in that, I still want to put down 50,000 of the dollars in a bank that just sits there 
and use 100,000 and try to cut corners on saving to try to do that. Here's the reason why. If by the third year we don't make enough, I want to be able to get the investors money and say, here's the 150,000 that you gave us, that you invested in us. Although we were able to produce like the profit for you, you took no loss. You drew even, right. which would make they an inv get their investment back. back at the very least. The team will benefit anyway because it got an invested sum of money that got it through three years. So the team still benefits, right? But there, there's a fiduciary duty that the recipient has to the investor. And at the same time, the investor is gonna, would be happy to even either run it back. Okay, let's take a look at what happened in the three years that we invested the money to you and where you guys came short on terms of in profit and whatever. Maybe if we can solve those ops, we can solve those issues and come up with some solutions, then the next time around, we'll give back the same money we gave you. So in reality, they never really even lost any money. They're now reinvesting and with a different path to see if they can make money. That's how you have a good relationship client. But in the esports industry, I don't think that's happening. What I, this is what I, I know what's happening. These frauds are lying to the investors. And the investors actually know they're being lied to. They know they're being lied to, but they want to take the risk anyway because it, it, the amount, when they look at esports globally and they're looking at the industry and it's nearing its billion dollars, all they see is, I, I want to put out a billion dollars. I got to get in. I got to get in. So it's, it's like, yes, get in at what cost and to what loss. They're going in with no plan. They get all of these people fudge these numbers and lie to them and Dudes be trying to lie to Facebook about ads and, and, and bots here and all this other nonsense is going on. And they get gassed and they, they, get, they, they bite. And I'm just, I be looking at them, I'm like, the sad part is like, the amount of money that they spend, they can get other teams from the ground floor that can return far more by getting far less. But these guys, they go, oh, well, Scared money don't make money. Yeah, but what's that other line? Um, something, um, a penny a fool, no, no, a penny a wise, a pound a fool, something like that. I get what I'm talking about. Uh, I forgot the line. But there's nothing wrong with being cautious. That has nothing to do with being scared. You know, you want to be cautious of what you're doing with your investment. Stop investing this large amount of money into like, these these random schemes like you got when you invest in a team you got to look to see what the team's legacy is dudes be coming in talking about yo I, 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 i'm gonna shove 20 million to you on based on what this team okay what has a team done what what does that team what the, what what audience does that team connect to the audience that it connects to what does that audience provide for, to, uh, like, what does that audience uh, give to that team? Dudes are buying shells, names. Dudes are getting gassed to get, oh, we got a donation from Stated Average. Thank you, Stated. $5 donation, appreciate it. Here's an example, right? Look at our team. Our team, oh, these are donations, but let's consider the donations from all of our community members and our players as an investment for Empire Acadia. This investment keeps the team alive. This team is able to go to different countries and different regions of the world, help set up esports infrastructure, work with television networks, do different um, um, uh, 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 guest speaking at different conferences, conventions, expos, all of the sort to get esports moving in these different directions, all at the same time, while still getting some of our players to actual uh, majors, we can't get them all, and sometimes we don't even get a lot of them, but we get at who we can, right? Based on the money generated from this community. The money generated from this community is less than $30,000 a year, and we're able to do all of that. So imagine if someone says, okay, on top of the donations that you're getting, we're gonna invest or fund you 50 grand. What we can do with that? On our, on our donation drive to go to Africa, we were able to produce a, a nationally televised 
continental televised actually, esports championship. We were able to get involved in the largest telecommunication um, company um, gaming conference, which was held in Ghana. Um, shout out to them. There are so many things we were able to do just on the donation money alone. This content providing we find a, a way to market the content to a wider audience will bring back revenue. Now, if we're doing that on donation money, imagine what we can do on invested money. These are the things investors need to look at. What have you done? How, if what you've done, if we gave you money, how will what you've done, our money infused to what you've done and what you're doing, how we're going to get that back? How are these guys getting this money and, and that's not being answered to the investor? These investors are being sold. Well, if you look at the Riot League, they make millions of dollars a year. We're not they're not investing in Riot. They're investing in you. They didn't ask about other companies. They asked about your company, your team. They didn't ask about the scene. They asked, what, how is your scene going to generate them money in now, how is your team going to generate the, um, money for them in the esports scene? That's what they want to know. They don't care what other people's money they're making. If they, if they cared about that, they'd go and invest in them. But clearly, Tencent and Riot, or, no, not, Tencent, Riot and the rest of the guys, they don't need nobody's invested money. <laughs> well, not, the, not those type of investors anyway. They already got the real investors, and they've already shown and they've already proved. So they, they already got to prove that. But it's just ridiculous how these else? Go on. Yeah. They're also doing it. They're also doing it themselves, keeping it in house. That too. Which is one of the reason. Which is one of the reasons why they're so successful. Uh, like, all right, y'all don't want to. Y'all don't want to um, come together and do X, Y, and Z. Because I'm quite sure it, it was a situation where they went to other companies and said, "Hey, let's do this together." And then they're like, "You know what? We're gonna do it ourselves." Sure. And then now look, look where they are now. Exactly. And now everyone wants to buy into them. Which is that, that, that that's going to be the future of EMP, the very same way, very same way. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we're just taking the long and the hard road, the long and hard road, but it's safe. Um, okay, um, so on that note, we spent about 46 minutes talking about this. I don't want to be long-winded to carry this on. I do want to continue to stream and play the game. So what we're going to do is um, uh, I'm going to leave you with some closing notes. What your, what your thoughts on these other teams and what do you think EMP can do? And then I'll, close, I'll, I'll stop the stream at about one hour. And you guys will find, you'll find a copy of the stream on this channel here. And what I may do is I may re-upload this on the Empire Acadia channel for other people to just look over. It'll be edited. So like the whole first part that we had to mess up on, um, that'll be edited and stuff like that. But this is something I think people should think of, should talk about, have a conversation about. And even comment on in the in the description, uh, no, in the comment section below. So, where do you see us moving forward, and and what what do you think Empire Acadia has learned from some of these teams being murdered and 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 oh, murdered is such a harsh word, but dissolved. What 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 are some of the um, the pitfalls you think we've avoided? Uh, I mean, I would say for the most part after restructuring you don't put a whole lot of um responsibility or reliance upon you know any particular one player or any to be like hey you know the investor needs you to do this instead of it being structured around that you have it structured around yourself as the entity uh -huh. Well, I think that is a that that is a huge plus. But also at the same token, I know that there are players, you know, that still go out and do stuff, you know, per for whatever sponsor and, or investor that we have at that particular time. But um, I think we avoided that. <laughs> we have to really go through that. I mean, but that was after a growing pain. Yeah. A little bit. That, that was definitely after a grown pain. There's a, there's a lot of things that we've definitely learned, so I can't even complain. I am happy that we are where we are, so it's not like, um, it's not like as a team we have not learned or grown from this. There's so much um, that we have learned 
over the years and the failures of other teams have helped has helped light the pathway for us and what we should and should not do so we look forward to trying right. to make some some changes moving forward but like if anything i mm -hmm. would say overall just you know you have a plan you have a vision stick to it and execute it, it's not like like you know within our company or in the community we have like a whole bunch of multi-talented people it's just all coming together using our resources and making it happen really well I, I, i'll go i'm sorry no that was basically it just being consistent in what we're doing and um and and hoping and praying that life doesn't happen because sometimes that could be a setback a major setback so, Life, all, life always hits us with some serious setbacks. So we, that we have to watch out for as well. But you, you're 100% right about that. All right, Robin, thank you for joining me on this little one hour um, piece here where we spoke on, these, uh, on this topic. I thought this was a, a topic worth speeding, speaking on. And I just wanted to make some jokes about the burrito esports. Sorry. <laughs> No, that was kind of but funny. You know, you know how you know how we can you know how we can really close this out though. I mean, you you, at, you asked me the question of what we can do. Yeah. As far as EMP to move forward, what would be your advice for the esports teams that are still, you know, survive? That's I would say that's on life support, or new teams that's up and coming that's breaking out that's that's that are babies still in their infancy stage within this industry what advice do you have for them um if you are not willing to if you are not willing to do the painstaking hours of staying up and doing this on your own even when your staff your team your players give up on you don't get into this job do not get into this field you will fit you will be you will be let down by a lot of people my father gave me this advice and he told me this he says son remember one thing your dream is not other people's dreams my ambitions aspirations are not other people's everyone have their own interests and agenda and although people will come with you for the ride you have to understand and you have to be very uh what's the word for this you have to be very understanding that some people are not there to ride to the end. Some people are just there to ride for a short, a short period. When they want to get off the bus, you got to stop the bus and let them off. Can't get mad at them. Just got to let them off. And it's, it's, you, have to, you have to go, when you're driving that bus, you have to think in your mind that you're going to get there alone. By the time the bus reaches the station, no one will be in the bus. If you're lucky, and if things work out with you, it's like reaching Penn Station. And you're like, last stop, everybody get off, and the bus is filled, and a bunch of people get off with you. Right? Things are normal. Few people would have stayed on the bus with you. But you can't get mad if you park that bus and nobody's in there. It's just the way life is, and that's the way business is. So, And because of that, guys like you, Kubu, Wes, KDZ, Lance, whole bunch of guys... You guys, over the years, I wanted to really get this bus to the last, um, the last station, last stop, with it full. And y'all kept telling me, stop doing that, stop doing that. Focus on making sure you can do this yourself, Triforce. Focus on you. If you can't help us, if you, don't, if you can't help yourself. And I really appreciate that uh, advice you guys have given me. Because ever since I took that advice, ever since I lost the gaming house, the ARC in 2013, despite the downs that we have, we are actually on the right track. And on that, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for um, tuning into this. Hit that subscribe button. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, we want to get my wife's channel, uh, Empress Nile, up um, to 1,000. She hit the 900 mark, so make sure you guys help her out. Um, you can look in the description. You can find all of our different social medias like Hashtiff, um, Twitter, Facebook, and, and Instagram. Where you can contact us on other points. And you also have some donation links um, in there if you guys want to support the content that we make i um, appreciate you guys continue to watch our stuff we'll upload this on the empire acadia channels i upload for everyone to see and we'll see you guys in the next one good night